Today we're talking about how to make a disaster recovery plan. Well, for those of us who are in IT, information technology, this topic becomes more and more important every day. No matter what region you are in in the world, you can see examples of either natural disasters or human-induced disasters. So let's take a look at what disaster recovery really is. Number one, it involves a set of policies, tools, and procedures. It enables the recovery or continuation of critical technology infrastructure and systems. It's invoked following either a natural disaster or human-induced uh, disasters. Some natural disaster examples are hurricanes, tornadoes, fires, floods. So different areas of the world are hit by these on a periodic basis. Also, you'll see human-induced uh, disasters, which can be human error. Things like maybe there's a software or hardware technology upgrade and just human error causes a problem. There can be also breaches like security breaches or even sabotage. Uh, sometimes when employees leave or get upset, they can, if they have access to the technology, they can sabotage it. Well, disaster recovery also focuses on the information and or technology systems supporting business, critical business continuity. And it involves keeping all essential business aspects functioning despite significant disruption. And it's considered a subset of business continuity, but it's a little different than business continuity. So why do we even care? Number one, IT systems and data increasingly is critical to companies, and I would submit countries. Also, the demand for a rapid recovery is increasing. Any kind of downtime can be catastrophic. So from research from 2015 shows that companies with a major loss of data, 43% never were able to recover and reopen. 29% closed within two years. Also, from 2018, there's an article, The Importance of Disaster Recovery, and it suggests that downtime lasting for an hour can cost a small company a, approximately $8,000, a mid-sized company around $74,000, and a large company up to $700,000. So you can see that can be a pretty big impact. So what are we talking about at a high level? So we're talking about backing up data and systems. We're talking about once we back it up, we have to, on a periodic basis, we have to test it to make sure that that approach and everything works. Then when an event occurs, we have to recover and then we have to rebuild. So that's at a high level. So what are some of the things we need to consider? So first of all, if an event occurs, if a disaster occurs, who is the emergency contact? Who gets the call? Who's the first notification? Who are any other external contacts? And then the notification network. So once this happens, all the important players need to be notified so action can begin to be taken. Also understanding the scope of what the, the recovery looks like and the disaster recovery teams and responsibilities. So when it is invoked, every member on the team needs to know specifically what they're responsible for so they can take action. Also, it's important to know who is the disaster recovery lead because they are actually leading this effort to uh, the recovery. We also need to know the disaster management team. They are responsible for keeping the approaches, the processes, and all of this up to date. We also need to know the network team, the server team, applications team, and the data and backup recovery team. So who, who are the team members? And again, what's their responsibilities? So when we talk about data and we talk about backups, we also want to know what is the frequency. Depending upon some data, some data is backed up continually real time. So they're capturing the data and they're backing up 
the whole real time. And then we need to know the retention periods. How long do we keep the backups? Then we need to know the restoring the IT functionality. What are the levels, what are the layers, and what's the process and order that we restore? We also need an inventory of all the IT systems that may be impacted, as well as the network equipment. So this can be very expansive, and this can be very detailed. So this is just a high-level look at all the aspects that we need to consider. So here are just a few best practices to remember. Number one, practice the recoveries. Number two, review the whole process on a regular basis to ensure that it's up to date. And number three, back up and then confirm that the backups did work properly. So if you need a tool that can help you with your disaster recovery plan, then sign up for our software now at projectmanager.com.